Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about a movie called The 13th Warrior. The movie came out in 1999. It is based on a Michael Crichton book from 1976 called Eaters of the Dead. At the time, this movie came out of nowhere for me. I didn't have any history of it, but you know, doing a little research into it, finding out it's a blend of Beowulf and some other mythology. I happen to really love this movie. It stars Antonio Banderas, um, Omar Sharif, Vladimir Kolch, and a cast of characters that are really good, in my opinion. They all work well together. But I think I'm in a minority here, because this movie bombed. It, I think it's $160 million to make. I don't know how they put in advertisement or whatever, and it grossed $81 million. So, big box office bomb in the biggest of 1999. I just happen to love this movie. Uh, I look back on it, I watch it a lot, and I can see some uh, elements that, um, you know, aren't perfect, aren't exactly uh supporting the movie in a sense but i think it just came out at the wrong time it's one of those things that just happen every once in a while because i really enjoy this movie i think there's a and i'm by the way i'm not even a big fan of antonio banderas i'm not i just uh i'm a big fan of medieval stuff and this has that uh tone of is it supernatural or not type thing and it's a blend of cultures. I really get into this movie. I think it's well made. But again, this is a box office bomb of epic proportions. And I really can see it being more of a wrong time thing. I guess if you go in depth and use like objective the values of the movie perhaps i could be convinced but looking at it from face value i just can't watch this movie enough i own it on dvd if it comes on i'm watching it i'll try to be a little vague but it is an older movie with plot you know discussing the plot or spoilers but basically antonio banderas is an ambassador to um more of a Norse uh, culture. He did something bad. I think, you know, sexy Antonio Banderas uh, messed with someone's wife and he got like the shit detail. So he goes to be an ambassador and it, I enjoy the culture clash. They make fun of him because of his small horse and, uh, the, you know, he's trying to learn uh, their culture, their language. Um, and his first introduction to them is like a funeral, and then a, it was a fight. And it's jarring. Uh, I think this is maybe the first time he was sent on this mission. And it goes into a lot of the uh, going back and forth and him really trying to get his, wrap his head around this culture and how they work, uh, what they value. So you have this beginning, it draws me in. It's a, you know, Viking funeral, um, and they do some crazy things in here, uh, like women agree to accompany the dead body into Valhalla so they get burned, and he's quickly wrapped up in an adventure as somebody comes running from another village, there's this threat, and he has kind of attached himself to going on this mission with the new leader of the Norsemen or the Vikings. And again, the progression is works for me. I like the way it's film is shot, the uh, differences in their culture, the, the way they dress. He's trying to figure things out. And there's some uh, pretty good fight scenes. I like the way the, um, you know, the costumes, like a lot of things could really fall apart if you don't have a really good feel for um the time you're living in 
and uh, you could be drawn out, or I could be drawn out in a sense where I'm trying to really get into this and I see something that just doesn't look proper or it's like badly made. And I can say that I really enjoy what they did with this movie. The um, aesthetics are fine, They're actually very good in my opinion, but it's like I said, I'm not doing a super deep dive on most of these podcasts. So he goes and he finds out that there's these mystical, this mystical evil is rising up. And at one point he's got to start to be helpful as a warrior. And they go into that transition. And this is all going on with your following the leader of this uh, Norse group, Vikings, going to basically vanquish this evil. They go to another land, you're speaking to, and all this time, Antonio Banderas has really handicapped. He doesn't understand what they're saying. He's got his aide uh, who's helping him translate. And I like how they, they the growth of the character is pretty good. I like the arc that they put him on, that he goes through becoming brothers with these people and really cementing himself as uh, uh, one of the warriors. Uh, this is a scene, he, he doesn't like the heft of the weapons the Norse use. So he goes to, um, oh, uh, you know, type of smith thing and he gets, he shaves it down for more of a quick, uh, lighter weapon. And they're making fun of him here and there. But when it really becomes to the true evil, I'm not going to give too much away, but it gets dark. It, it's really um, uh, a struggle for these warriors who come to realize what's going on. And part of the twist is um, kind of relating to uh, a mother and the important element of this evil that you have to take out. So they have to devise a plan. They're not just going to take um, whatever people they have in this town, defend the walls, and just, uh, you know, fend them off all the time. They know they have to cut the head off of the snake, so to speak. So there's in that part of the mission. And as you're going along, I happen to be captivated by Antonio Banderas' performance the cast of characters, because you mostly focus on Banderas and the leader of the Norsemen and a couple of characters, but everything feels proper. It works for me. And yes, there were a couple of nitpicks here and there, but I don't, this is one of those movies that maybe goes right past my blinders. I'm just super absorbed into it. It gets me going. And a lot of people I show it to enjoy it. It's almost like, oh, wow, this is actually a good movie. Which leads me more to believe that it just came out at the wrong time. You got a pretty epic uh, ending as they complete a mission and realize that um, there's a, a higher stakes now. So they latch this effort and it's really um, done very well with the leader of the Vikings. Like I said, I'm not into giving too much away unless I'm really going into spoilers and stuff. But to me, it's epic. Uh, you won't get the grand scale of like huge armies battling each other. Cause I think there's um, times where I think they're defending like the village or a, a, a you know, place. So basically it's 12 or 13 warriors that go out on this mission. And it's just, really hits home for me. I, I love almost everything about it. Like I said, I think the arc of the Antonio Banderas character, um, Ahmad Fadian, or Fadian, he was a court poet to the Caliph of Baghdad. And you got, like I said, the clash comes in with the different, uh, you know, he's wearing something different, it, it clashes where he's going. I really like his arc. I think the progression of him becoming one of them, the uh, not understanding of the language at first, and their, their mannerisms, and some of the rituals they do, uh, he's, he's fascinated by it, and he's learning. And when the movie ends, it's him uh, writing down a story. 
I think it all comes together well. I like the highs and lows. They don't do too much uh, nonsense bullshit. It seems to take a lot of the um, elements seriously. And I think this is one of my favorite movies of his. I, I'm really hard-pressed to... I like some of those crazy uh, movies with the fucking guitar case, whatever they're called. Um, but I don't really look back on Antonio Banderas' career and say, oh, he's one, you know, he's one of my actors I like and enjoy to watch. I will always name The 13th Warrior as one of my favorite Antonio Banderas movies. It's just hands down. It's just, I guess it's made for me, you know. It, it, I'll forgive any flaws, but I can imagine there's a element out there that knows about that land and the history, you know, like, this is fucking bullshit, and, you know, this wouldn't happen, this isn't real, he'd be killed. I guess I could let that go for something like this. I implore people to watch it. I, I, I There's so many numerous times I just... Ask somebody, have you ever seen the 13th Warrior? And if they say no, I think most of the time, if my memory is correct, people enjoy this movie. It's good. It gets a little dark, and um, there are consequences. There's no real feel of anybody's immortal in the sense that like the plot's going to protect them. And that's hard to do with a movie like this. You know, you don't. I don't know what the outcome will be, you know, at the climax. And when you see everything unfolding, it's really done well. Like, there were times I really thought this was going to go wrong. I mean, it does in a sense, but it's hard. I think it's hard to make it that you feel um, that the characters are in jeopardy, that they, they've gone in and they're in over their head. If you watch a movie like a prequel, like Star Wars, uh, Solo, whatever the fuck that movie was, was fucking bad. You don't have a threat value for Han and Chewie, like, because you know they survived the movies. Unless they were doing, like, a Star Trek Kelvin timeline where things could change. So that element of the, you know, oh my god, he's going to crash or he's going to get killed here, is, it's missing for, the, for that premise. Here, I was totally into it. The scenes get to me. The progression of the story works. I really enjoy the culture clash, the growth of the characters, and from both sides, too. They, they have, you know, they learn to appreciate Antonio Banderas' character and what he can bring to the, uh, the group, in a sense, and his heart, it is. Valor, although I think the theme of the movie might be um, more related to a uh, useful servant of God. Well, so, yeah, me being an atheist, is a, it doesn't impact me. I want to see a good movie. I don't care. I run Dungeons and Dragons. I fucking have gods in the world. It's not, in, you know, nothing that uh, makes a bias in me or whatever. But there's some good actors in here. The chemistry is great. I just gush over this movie. I, it's one of my favorites, in a way. I, I could see myself now looking back. I've watched this movie a lot. It was always at the front of my DVD collection to pull out and put in. If, if it comes on or I see it and I see the, you know, the poster, so to speak, I'm, I'm always watching this movie. So that's my you know, surface thoughts, a little bit of the plot. I think everybody should watch this movie in that way. I think it's... A, well, okay, so it's not going to be a romantic fucking comedy. But it's got a lot of elements that I think really work for a movie like this. And damn, it was a bomb, but it's a bomb I love. I can't say enough about this movie. I really would recommend it to a lot of people. So there you go. Hope everybody's doing well. Holiday seasons are coming. I wish everybody the best. Be safe. Take care.